a number of students have been a bit confused about the whole issue of breaking a bicycle wheel. So I thought I'd record this video to help talk through some of the issues about what's actually involved. It's really kind of surprising, surprisingly interesting and rich physics involved in something you've probably done every day and slowing down your bike or slowing down your car. Let's, for the purposes of this video, deal with a car wheel. Cars also use disc brakes. So here's my highly sophisticated picture of a car. Now, on the ground, of course. Now we have the disc here, and you're clamping it on either side uh, with calipers, and that's what slows things down. Here's a picture of the, the disc for a car brake. Now, first of all, let's imagine what happens if we had a spinning wheel suspended in the air. So instead of the car being on the ground, we've lifted it up on a jack or something, and so we've got a wheel that's spinning around, not touching the ground. Now, if we start applying the brakes, that's applying a torque, because the disc wants to spin this way, and you're clamping it, there'll be a friction force that points in that direction, and so you're going to get a torque, tau, brake, that's opposing the motion. Now you can work out what we'll do in this case. In practice it will stop the wheel spinning pretty fast. Uh, you can do it in two different ways. You could use the equation that the torque equals the moment of inertia times the rate of change of the angular speed. That's basically force equals mass times acceleration in angle speak. Or you can do it using energy. So you could say that the, the torque times the angle it rotates through. This is equivalent to a force times distance, so it's the angular equivalent of the work, is equal to the starting kinetic energy, half i omega squared. So the torque times the angle must cancel out the starting energy and bring it to a halt. So by either of those methods, you can work out how long or over how much rotation the wheel would stop in this case. So that's what happens if the wheel is spinning off the ground. How does putting the ground into the equation change things? Well, we've got our car that's moving along at some velocity v. And now, when you're not applying the brakes, there's not really any torque on the wheel. Uh, it's just resting on the ground at the bottom, and hopefully you've got nice smooth ball bearings and there's not much friction in the middle. But now you start applying a torque. You clamp on your brakes, and so you're getting a torque in this direction. And that's going to slow the wheels down. But the car is still moving at velocity v. So the ground is racing past here faster than the wheel wants to turn. So there's going to be a friction force here. And likewise at the back wheel. So basically, when you put the brakes on, the wheel wants to turn slower, but because the car is still moving fast, the ground's still trying to push the wheel along at the normal speed. So what you're getting is you're now getting a torque here and here, caused by the friction force between the tyres and the road, and that's opposing the torque at your brakes. The friction force, of course, is very useful. It's what's actually slowing your car down, and that is kind of the point of brakes, to slow the car down. So now we've got our wheel and we've got friction with the ground, which is applying a torque, and we've got the brakes, which are applying a torque in the other direction. Now, if you get rid of this torque, you release the brakes, then this also goes away, because now the wheel can just happily roll along at the speed of the car. So the two are coupled. If you didn't have this, you wouldn't have that. The harder you push here, the more torque here, then the slower the wheel wants to turn, but of course the car is still moving, so there's going to be more and more friction across the ground. If you lock this too hard, really slam the brakes on, then the wheels will start skidding across the ground. But normally it'll still be rotating. Uh, the torque from this is overcoming the torque from the brakes and allowing it still to rotate, but at a steadily slower and slower rate. I hope that makes sense. Mathematically, what you'd want to do, you're going to have a torque due to the friction. So that should be vertical because it's at the bottom here which is going to be this friction force 
friction between the ground and the tyre times the radius of the whole wheel. So there's going to be a torque. It's going to be equal to the force times that large radius. But there's also going to be the torque here. And that, so this is the torque at the uh, ground. And then you get the torque at the brakes, which is going to be equal to one of your braking forces times the radius of the brake pads. I'll call it small r. And so the total torque on the whole wheel is going to be, um, let's say, torque brake minus torque ground. Well, these two forces are different. So this is the uh, the braking ground force, and this is the force of the brakes. They both in general will be the same. In fact, generally this will have to be much bigger than that because the radius here is larger than the radius there. So that's the net torque, and that net torque is going to be slowing down the wheel. So it's going to be slightly positive, there's going to be slightly more um, braking torque than ground torque. If they were the same, then it would keep spinning at the same rate. So this one's going to be a slightly bigger than that one, and so that's going to cause it to slow down. Now in practice, if you had a very strange car, say... Um, a car with enormous wheels and a very slow moving car with that much weight. In that case, the energy in the wheels could be much bigger than the kinetic energy of the actual body of the car. In that case, the difference between these torques have to be enormous because most of the effort of braking is slowing down your rapidly spinning wheels. But for typical cars and typical bicycles, the mass of the car or the bicycle is much more than the mass of the wheels. You can see this because if you did lift the car off the ground and put the brakes on the wheels, it'd stop almost at once, very, very quickly. It doesn't take much torque to do that. However, when you're bombing down the highway at 100 kilometers an hour, it takes a long time to slow down. And that's mostly because of this friction force, which is slowing the whole car down, which is opposing your braking torque. For the purposes of the bicycle question, you can just assume that these two are about the same. The difference doesn't have to be very big because it doesn't take much net torque to slow the wheel down. If you wanted to calculate it absolutely rigorously, then you would have to factor in this difference and once again factor that into one of these equations to work out how much difference in torque is needed to bring it to a halt over a particular time or a particular angle. But for the purposes of the, the question in this week's homework, don't worry about that. You can just assume these two are the same, which is pretty close to being true. Um, so in that case, the torque you're applying here is mostly opposing the motion of the car rather than the spinning of the wheels.